What's up guys, Leo Camacho here, and I am at the Google Lunar X Prize 2012 Team Summit. This year, teams from around the world met in Washington, D.C. to discuss their progress on the $30 million race to the moon, sponsored by Google. I had a chance to talk to each of the teams about their successes and failures, and find out where they stand at this stage of the competition. In the Apollo era, there was entire nations uh, behind an enterprise to go to the surface of the moon. There was large percentages of the U.S. GDP dedicated to going to the surface of the moon. The space race inspired so many people in the 60s because it was a competition on a national level, right? And people love competition, whether it's like politics or American Idol. People love getting in there and competing and vying for their own team, right? And we lost that after the space race was won. The Russia have a great heritage in this process. Some people started to call Google Lunar X prizes like a moon race 2.0. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Only two superpowers have soft landed on the moon. We think it's about time for a change. This is tremendous for me to be able to engage in a lunar program. This will be the first time a non-government asset has been landed on the lunar surface. A number of you were actually looking at going to some of the Apollo sites. You become an important historical heritage artifact when you land. Five years into the competition, one of the things that I've noticed at uh, this year's summit meeting is that everyone is feeling that uh, time is, is running out. We are competing against teams who have more than a three-year head start. Um, we have a little bit of a strap on, on the cash. Uh, what we did is decide to broker a Falcon 9 and actually try to sell secondary payloads. So that model's not working out that good. Astrobotics direction has shifted along the way. We are creating a mission called Icebreaker to go to the pole of the moon to go after the ice. We can turn that ice into rocket fuel. You can make that ice into water for astronauts. It really becomes a, a valuable resource toward expanding beyond Earth orbit. Roving at the pole there's a tremendous amount of the strategy and planning. It is essentially shadow dodging and seeking the sun. If we can find the ice, we can open up the world to new horizons of planetary exploration. Affirmative. Contact light is on. We are on the surface. We knew from early on that we wanted to have a Japanese rover on our mission. It's a country of high technology and uh, intricate precision engineering. We were very uh, excited because it looks kind of different than the others, like an uh, insect. We have a, a so-called WEG. Uh, based uh, rover, that means it's wheel and leg uh, mixture. Uh, it's like it's uh, walking, get off its legs and then put the legs down to the soil. Uh, it's a worm-like robot that crawls around the surface without using any wheels because we feel like uh, moon dust is a big major concern so we remove that technical challenge. We don't have a rover, we have a spacecraft that will land and then take off and fly again. What is good about Asimov is that it can actually have two wheels free up in the air without contact to ground and still be fully operational. We're uh, pumped and we have a 16-year-old developing a spectrometer. That's already complete, so we're ready to put that on the moon as well. We have to go back. We will launch on October 17, 2015. We're taking the right approach and are going to win this prize. I'm building a spacecraft that's going to go for the moon. I mean, how many people can say that? For more exciting news, like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at GLXP or visit our website at www.googlelunarxprize.org.